So we've made some measurements on Inventor. We found the center of gravity. We found some of the important measurements. Now let's figure out what kind of a force, what, what magnitude, what strength of a push or pull is going to tip this over. So I've got a few cutouts here. Things to keep in mind, right? What we're going to be studying is this idea of a moment. A moment of a force is something that causes a, a rotation or a twist. So you can imagine then, uh, if I have this applied tipping force T pushing in this direction and I don't let the table slip, so I put a little tack down here, then this force would cause a moment, or the moment of this force would cause this rotation, right? And then that's the applied force. The weight always acts at the center of gravity. Right, so the center of gravity would apply a moment if I were somehow to remove part of the floor. You know, it's kind of a weird idea, but that would re, uh, apply a moment that would cause this rotation. Right, but of course there is a floor there, and there's a normal force. So sitting normally, uh, or in there's normal circumstances, it's going to look something like this. Getting figuring out what this force needs to be in order to tip it is really all about getting this thing started. So let's think a little bit about what we know about the moments. There's two moments in this case. There's a moment due to the tipping force here, and there's a moment due to the object's weight, and that acts at the center of gravity. So if I want to think about how do I express those moments, well, the moment due to the tipping force, which I might just say is called MT, we know is some force, which right now we're going to leave as the variable t, just some tipping force t, and uh, perpendicular to some distance away from the pivot. So what is my distance away from the pivot? Well, this is my distance away from the pivot. So I'm just going to refer to that as, that's the height. It's the height at which I'm pushing. If for some reason I was pushing really low on the table, then the height would be lower, but I'm pushing up here. So I'm just going to use it, that as height h. Um, what about the moment due to uh, the object's weight? It acts at the center of gravity. Well, again, following this, the object's weight, which I'll just call W. So we're going to talk about the object, the moment due to the object's weight. And that's going to be, I'm going to call it W for the force coming down here, which remember is about 379 pounds. And how far does that act perpendicularly from the pivot? Well, here's the pivot, here's the perpendicular distance, and that's the width in this case divided by 2. So I've got a couple Ws. I'm going to go ahead and write width out just so we don't confuse it with weight. So we see that those are the, the instances. So it kind of makes sense then. If we want this thing to rotate, then what we need to have is we need to have the moment due to the tipping force be greater than the moment due to the weight. So what's going to happen? In, in actuality, the moment due to the weight changes during the tip, but it's at its maximum value at this location. If I imagine what happens in this case, uh, is, is this happens, it tips, it tips, it tips, it tips, it tips, it tips, and here's where we know is that critical point where that center of gravity is directly over that support, that pivot. What is the moment due to the object's weight here? It's actually zero because there is no distance away from the pivot. So it's at its maximum value here, and that's what we're going to sort of think about in terms of our analysis. So we know then that this needs to be at least uh, this. The moment due to the tipping force has to exceed the moment due to the weight. So I'm going to set them equal to each other. And keep in mind, what I want to solve for is I just want to solve for what is this force, this tipping force. And if I exceed that force and it doesn't slip here, I'm guaranteed to tip this thing over. So a little bit of algebra would put it into these equations. Tipping force will equal, and again, I'm going to leave it here and we'll put in my numbers here. There. So what was my weight? If you remember from Inventor, my weight was about 379 pounds. So that's what W is. The width of, divided by 2, I made that measurement in Inventor, and I figured out that that was 18 
uh, inches. I'm not going to write it down as 18 inches, though. 18 inches is a foot and a half. So I'm going to write 1.5 feet. And the reason is, is by convention, we talk about a moment in pound feet. That would be the unit. If we left it in inches, as long as we keep all the other things in inches, that's okay. But the unit then would be pound inches. And of course, I'm going to divide by a height. And again, if this is in feet, I need my height to be in feet. The height that I recorded from Inventor was 36 feet. So that's 3 feet. 36 inches, rather. And that's 3 feet. So now I simply have to do the mathematics, right? 379 times 1.5 divided by 3. And my value then, remember, foot will cancel foot dimensionally. So my answer is going to be in a force in pounds. And when I calculate that, it's really close to 190 pounds. So 190 pounds of tipping force applied in that direction will cause this to twist. And ultimately, if I keep that 190 pounds, 100 pounds force going or exceed it, it is guaranteed to tip the table. Okay, use that with uh, your inventor object to figure out what force would what would be required to tip your object.